Alright guys, today we're going to be making some blunters. Uh, they are the, the uh, tampers that, I, that I've been making for blunting and I uh, just want to show you guys exactly how they're made. I had a couple requests for that. So the first thing, like any tamper that I make, is taking the steel over and up, they call upsetting the end of it, which is basically making it a little bit larger. So it makes a good tapper. Uh, so we're going to do some capping of our own here uh, to make sure we flatten that out. Get a good flat surface there, which we'll touch up later. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, what I didn't show you was cutting it off, uh, that little wedge there to the right is where you cut it off. I uh, lost the clip on that one, my apologies, but uh, first thing we're going to do in that round bar is make it a square bar. So we're going to just kind of draw that out. Uh, drawing out just means that you know, you're, you're hitting it uh, evenly, and each time you hit it, it stretches that out just a little bit, makes it a little thinner, a little longer. But as you can see, that heat goes away fairly quick in small projects like this. So you, you try to work fast, but it's more about working accurately. Uh, and you just go back to the back to the uh, furnace when you're when you're done and heat it back up. So the nice part is that you know it gives you little breaks. You can grab a glass of water, a bottle of water or whatever you want to do. Just, just think about your project or or whatnot. So uh, while it's heating up, I'm, I'm kind of thinking you know, the motions that I'm going to go through. The biggest thing is here, especially in the beginning, you know, is just getting that drawn out, getting it to the length that I want it uh, without making it too thin. You can see us nice and bright, uh, almost white at this point. Um, you want to keep uh, turning it and hitting it, uh, making it uh, elongated as we go. And again, you can just see how fast that cools off. Every one of these hammer blows is uh, in a specific place uh, because you're, you're taking out a bulge or you're straightening something or uh, maybe, maybe you hit it too hard another time and you're, you're trying to, to rectify that uh, so you, you know, you're throwing it back in there just trying to get heated up again uh, good thing I got a cool apron that accents my love handles there um, but uh, no I just want to make sure that we're we're paying attention to how we hit and how we uh, uh, I should say how we strike uh, that so that every every hammer blow means something and we're not just beating on it to beat on it I can pull it out once again and just uh, continue to draw that. Now, even the way you turn your hammer depends on how how fast it'll draw out. So I'll turn my hammer just a little bit, and it'll help you know elongate that uh, uh, that that tamper. You can see it's getting longer here. Uh, it's cooling off pretty fast, which is at sometimes it gets a little frustrating because it's like you know I just want a couple more blows here. But if you work that thing too cold, what you're going to do is get stress fractures in that, and that'll end up uh, as you're working it, it'll end up breaking off and. Uh, or you have to wait to get it finished and you go to use it for the first time and it'll snap off on you and it's that's a little bit a little bit of frustration as well i decided just to let this play here for a little while you guys just to show you kind of how the tying goes Now I'm working specifically on the tip, getting that ready for the curl that we put into it before we do a bend. So we do a curl, we do a bend, and then we do a twist. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to bring that down, not to a point, but really close to a point. Alright, so different view here, we're going to start uh, working on the curl of that tip, so we're just going to be right around the edge of the anvil. This is an older anvil, so I don't have the straight edges on it, but it still works for me. And again, every angle that you hit that thing uh, with the hammer is going to make a different uh, bend in that curl, so you got to be real careful how you hit that. But uh, 
That's what we're going for right there. It's a little loop like that. So now we're going to go back into the furnace and heat up the, the body of the tamper um, in order to do our, our, uh, our bend. So I'm going to take out the wedge out of the hardy hole and put my hardy tool, bending tool in. Uh, we're going to come out. First thing I got to do is I got to cool that tip in some water because we don't want to smash that loop we just put in the, in the tip. So we're going to come over here and we're going to try to do this with one hand so I can film it with the other hand. Stick that in there and just cool it off. It doesn't take very long. Once you get a tip of it in the water, <clears throat> and I'll just turn that dark so you know it's cool enough. We're going to pull over our jig and put that bend in it that we need. And this one kind of slipped out on me, and that happens. Uh, the, the important part here is not to get too excited about it. I flipped it over, and you'll just put an opposite bend in it as well, and it gives that kind of shepherd's hook look to it. Uh, but we can fix that you know, where it slipped out on us. It didn't curl around quite like I wanted. Uh, and that happens sometimes, not a big deal. So I'll show, you how we're, I'll show you how we fix that here in a second. It doesn't take very long to heat it back up, but we didn't have it out for very long. So you can see that that hook's not quite down as far as I want. So we just hit right, where, right in a certain area. It should curl it right around for us. Just gotta make sure you got good heat. Lay it back down. The hardest part here is not grabbing with your fingers to, to manipulate it, believe it or not. Uh, you kind of forget you work on hot metal sometimes. All right, that's a good bend, so we have to throw it back in the heat and get ready for our twist here. Grab that back out of there and bring it back over to the vise. I'm going to drop the end hook first, get it snugged up. I have a, a bending tool that I use. Just slide it right on there for the right size. Give it a twist. And that puts that nice twist in it that uh, makes them so popular. Right before we get it off there, that causes a lot of scale to pop off. So we'll hit it with a wire brush to get that that scale of the. And all scale is just impurity or impurities that are coming out of the metal. So we usually I usually hit that uh, hit those a couple times with the wire brushes to clean them up. Then another heat, we're going to bring it in, brush it off one last time, uh, get the rest of that scale off, and uh, maybe make a slight adjustment here and there, make sure it's the way we want it to look. Not too. Sometimes you'll get a twist in or a bend in it, you don't realize it's there if you're not paying attention. So just make sure it's flattened out and centered, and good to go. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to Take it to the water wheel because even when you brush it off, sometimes you miss some of that scale. Uh, the hardest part about this is sometimes uh, that wire brush, the wire wheel can grab onto those little bad boys, and uh, before you know it, the way it goes and kind of gives you a startle. So you gotta be careful when you're doing that, just to not lose your concentration like that. And kind of make sure I get all my fingers and looking around, make sure there's no blood on anything, and I have to look for it. So, yeah, don't do that. All right, next, guy, next deal is uh, we go to the, the belt sander and we want to make it flat so it stands up on itself, on its own. We did hit it on the bottom in the beginning to upset the end, but uh, it doesn't make it exactly flat. I, like to, I don't know why, I just like to have them, you know, as, as close to perfectly flat as I can. Um, you know, I'm sitting there, I know I've been, you know, smoking my pipe before and it's like I want it to, I want it to stand up, you know, just playing around a little bit, so. That's what we do, and then we just kind of take those burrs off the edge there in the wheel, and then we'll go to the next one. And I probably wouldn't be able to do this as easily if I clench these, that's why I don't clench them, because we're not, we're not really doing anything with them hard, so I don't clench them to get the hardness into them. Makes it easier to do this part of the way. Alright, then the last thing we got to do is we got to uh, seal these with some beeswax. So we're going to heat them up, not very long, we'll heat them up too long and the beeswax just evaporates off of the, off of the steel. But we're going to heat it, up, heat it up in the forge and then got a chunk of beeswax here and it just melts off. That's kind of what you're looking for, that smokiness there without it evaporating right away. And what that does is that beeswax gets down into the pores of the metal and it keeps it from, uh, 
from rusting as fast. It also gives it that nice black patina uh, that we always like when it comes to forged materials. And, you know, I didn't have to pay for anything outrageous as far as having some finishing solution. Uh, it's a natural finishing solution. It does a good job. So um, I just use that. You know, a little wax, left a little wax from the bees, and one hobby helps the other one. And the last thing you do is you buff that off right before it gets too cool. Get the excess wax off of it. And this is one of the shorter ones that we made. Turned out pretty well, I think. And uh, that'll be going up for sale. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're all doing well. Until next time, you take care.